Hi there, and welcome just to a little video about the uh, personal equipment of the machine gunner. Now, I've just watched Rifleman Moore's excellent video on the uniform of the machine gunner, machine gun corps in 1916, so I'm not gonna cover the basic elements of that, but I thought I'd just cover a few of the specific machine, gun item, machine gunner items that were issued. And also we've got the mannequin here with 1914 pattern equipment made out of leather as opposed to the 1908 pattern equipment. Both the 08 and the 14 pattern equipment for machine gunners for the number one and number two in a machine gun section. So not all machine gunners, but they'd have carried a Webley Mark VI revolver of 0.455 caliber in the holster like so. So that was decided that machine gunners would carry uh, revolvers from around uh, 1915, 1916. Before that, they'd been armed with rifles, and actually for a very short period, they had no personal weapon at all. They were deemed that they didn't need a personal weapon. So the first type of equipment that was specific to machine gunners that I'll cover is the mask machine gunners. This one's actually marked with the service number of an individual who we've been able to trace and understand uh, how you know, this mask came about and, and survived so well. But it has two holes uh, for eyes, obviously, and then two holes for ears. You can see, and that's how it, it stays on. There's a tape which fits to the bottom of the service dress cap or around the head and that holds it up. The purpose of this mask is to stop shine from your face appearing behind the gun when, you are, uh, when you're firing it through a small emplacement because that's where the, the whiteness of your face would show up. Uh, it saves using camouflage cream or anything like that, it just st stops that shine. So an interesting thing, mask machine gunners. The next item of equipment is actually behind the small box respirator. Now we've put the small box respirator on this mannequin because we, we know they were issued uh, first of all two machine gunners because they were expected to stay in their positions uh, for longer than uh, the rest of the infantry um, and they would be exposed to the gases and uh, you know, chemical weapons being used uh, for a longer period. So they had the first pick of small box respirators. But behind that SBR is the CAPE machine gunners. Now CAPE is a short uh, three buttons on the front here with roller, rolled woolen shoulders and a leather pad and a thick collar that could actually stand up um, but it's just a short sort of often compared to a bolero style waistcoat and um, it's, a, it's you know, a light woolen material the same as service dress the purpose of which is to protect the machine gunner's shoulder and neck from the weight and the heat of a heavy machine gun barrel uh, and the tripod so these were with the number ones uh, principally uh, who would be carrying the tripod, but clearly the number twos were also issued these for carrying the gun uh, because in, during the First World War, they didn't have the water jacket covers that came in later on. And the third item of specialist machine gunners equipment are gloves machine gunners. These white gloves, in this case with leather palms, uh, were issued to machine gunners on the basis of one set per gun. And they stayed in service actually for quite a long time, but they don't survive today. So I think the design changed remarkably and, and they you know, turned into the sort of the trigger finger mittens that we see from the Second World War. But these are these are First World War pair of gloves machine gunners. As a demonstration of gloves machine gunner, we'll take the opportunity with the reenactorism video series that we're doing at the moment. And we've got one of the guns set up. Now, clearly, I can't fire the gun like this. I haven't got any... I, I haven't got any trigger finger. So what you will see is actually there is a there is a slit uh, on the in in there that you will be able to get your finger out of, like so. Finger there, so that holds down. Uh, we'll be able to operate the safety catch. My gloved thumb will be able to operate the trigger mechanism, and I'll be able to fire the weapon in that way. And the pad will still. I'll be able to quickly, you know, put my finger back in and hold the hot water jacket that wouldn't have had this barrel jacket cover on the First World War gun. So I'm able to hold the hot components and change the hot barrel very quickly uh, while protecting my hands. Uh, the late Joe Sweeney, uh, uniform expert, First World War, uh, Great War uniform expert, told me these are the only pair of machine gunner gloves that he knew were in existence. Uh, so very proud to have these in the collection and we'll be looking to try and make some copies, usable copies of these soon so that we can actually get them out on display uh, to see how they work. I talked about the uh, 1914 pattern equipment in the introduction. This was an, a wartime expedient to save uh, on having to use 
cotton mills, so or you know, milling and webbing companies of which they were limited and they needed a lot of machinery uh, to produce the 08 pattern equipment. So with the uh, 14 pattern equipment, you just had the webbing elements were the large pack and the small pack. Uh, the rest of it was in leather, which could be cut by any saddler or you know, sm small cottage industry without the large scale industrial mills. It is listed in the machine gun corps orders and the provisional stores for battalions as the equipment they were issued with. So although we do see um, machine gunners wearing 08 pattern equipment, actually from a uh, regulation perspective, 1914 pattern equipment was used. Uh, you know, as Rifleman Moore explained in his video, it's set up in exactly the same way. It's just leather as opposed to uh, web equipment. So the entrenching tool is on the rear with the halve in the bayonet carrier. Uh, this one does have uh, two uh, pistol ammunition pouches and the, for, and the water bottle in exactly the same way. And they'd be wearing the small pack and the large pack in the same way as well. Uh, the rest of the machine gun subsection would have been armed with rifles and this is the ammunition pouch for the 1914 pattern equipment. Uh, these, all the 1914 pattern equipment in our collection is reproduction made by the Military History Workshop in the Devon in the UK. Uh, we don't hold um, original items of these equipment because there are collectors that it's of more value to than us and we need to focus on the machine guns but we do have these reproduction items and it's worth saying that whilst it was the numbers three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that would have had been wearing these we also have uh, some documentation that shows that they used they they stripped out what's a half carrier in there um they, they stripped out the uh the, the rifle bandoliers that they've been carrying uh in these and then the numbers one and two would wear one of these pouches each with 25 round strips of belt ready for use with the vickers so they'd be wearing their pistol holster on one side and one of these on the other and they'd be carrying some ready ammunition but we'll cover that in a lot more detail in a future video uh, because there's some interesting nuances there as well in the fact that a small pack you see here actually fits a number eight belt box. Uh, so you'd be carrying belt boxes forward in the assault and you wouldn't be carrying your Havasat rations and things like that that the rest of the infantry would. So we'll cover that in a very specific uh, video in the future. And I hope that complements Rifleman Mortis video. Uh, nicely and you've learned a little bit more about the personal equipment of the machine gunner.